Hi crafty friends, Luisa Heinzel here. Welcome back to a new video. Welcome back to my channel. So it's really early in the morning here in Austria and I have a really, really big problem because <laughs> I wanted to uh, make um, yeah something like an intuitive art journaling page or something like that uh, yesterday. And uh, I saw some YouTube videos where they said, okay, use what you have, use what you have at hand and what you have around you and don't think about it. Use, yeah, everything you have and do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me show you. <clears throat> some of you might have seen it on um, Instagram. I've posted a part of this yeah, let me call it a fail yesterday because, yeah, this is it. I know there are people who say, okay, what's your problem? <laughs> there is no problem with this page, but I have a really, really big problem and I don't like it. And uh, I thought, okay, what can I do? Not only because I have the video material of this shit here um and yeah that was uh, um, something like a work that i wanted to make for you and for my youtube channel and yeah to have a new video content um but when i'm not satisfied i can't sleep i i can't live anymore that's ah such a crazy feeling and i thought i would like to make a video um about exactly these things and these things that are yeah going on in your mind when you have something like this and you are not satisfied you are you have not the desire that you expected you tried out something new and perhaps yeah it um the result is not that what you what you have expected what can you do so i think i found a solution what i would like to do with this to yeah make something out of it that i can be um, satisfied with and that I yeah especially can use for something because this is yeah really crazy <laughs> and I don't know how to use this um, and I want to talk a little bit about um, this feelings and this process uh, that you can have when you yeah have something like this and you want to try to make something else out of it so um, in the next little part of this video I uh, will cut and speed up the process um, how I came to this and I will give you a little voiceover so that you can um, yeah imagine how I came to this uh, page and then um, in the other part of the video I would like to try to cut this up and make some smaller pieces out of it I came to this idea after I really have thrown this into my trash can and then it was there and I was in front of the TV and thought, okay, 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 <laughs> you have thrown it away and perhaps tomorrow we will make a fire here in the house. So um, to heat the house up and um, then it will be gone forever. And I couldn't live with that. So I had to stand up from the TV and um, catch this and bring it back out of the trash can. And the main problem with this thing was <clears throat> this intuitive process that I'm not so confirm with. So um, the people I watched on YouTube who inspired me to this said, okay, don't think about it, don't think about it. So or I also um, didn't plan the uh, proportions of this double page here. So. Um, I glued my cardboard and here um, some other things. Perhaps you can see there is also um, some pieces of book pages and such stuff. And now it's yeah nearly invisible because of this uh, layering and my yeah not satisfied feeling. I tried to make it better, but yeah, it it um, hasn't become better. So so that was the problem. And I haven't planned the proportions of this page as I said so um, normally I would think about something like a focal point something like is the flow of the page in this direction or in this direction um, is there 
are there two parts of the page so this is a double page as you can see from an old um, botanical book and i would think about if this is one page and this is one page that they belong together of course but that they can stand alone and um, i haven't thought about this um, things while i did this process and i think that was the main thing um yeah that i failed this in my eyes uh, and i also realized mm, when you work with colors and some other mediums then um it is really really difficult when you have such a big page um so yeah i am not confirmed obviously with working on such a big um surface so as you can see i tried to get those flowers here i don't know if you even can see that these are flowers um i tried to get them uh while i thought about this focal point problem to get them in a flow like this so as you can see this green here yeah it uh, can look that it comes out here a little bit but on the other side there's nothing so in my eyes this stops here for some reason and that's yeah really really a problem but i couldn't add some green here later because they are there um, when i um, recognized this problem it was too late uh, because i have some other layers here um, some coffee and some splatters here and um, this green colors are brushes and um, I couldn't add them here without making it uh, yeah a, a much more disaster than it is <laughs> here so um, yeah I thought about um, cutting this up and making some yeah something like tags or bookmarks or something like um, ATC cards even if they uh, won't have the size the right size of those ATC cards because um, yeah when I thought about this I thought okay um, this is something like a mood board so perhaps you have seen on Facebook and yeah, somewhere else um, the people around the world are crazy about mood boards at the moment and I think um, when you make a mood board you do the same this intuitive process you put your pieces to your um, page uh, of course you make it much more regular than this one is um, and you um, have stamps and all that stuff and little tiny pieces so this is not such regular but um, when you make a mood board you also uh, follow your emotions and that stuff and you do it intuitive and I think um, yeah even if this doesn't look like a mood board like a mood board it's yeah this typical mood boards i think i can go with this way to cut it up because when you make a yeah normal mood board you have your layers and your stuff here and then you cut it into pieces and you have smaller pieces where you can um work with and where you can say okay um, I can put a focal point here, I can put a focal point here and you have a smaller surface that perhaps is a little bit more easy to handle. And that's the plan because, yeah, nothing can happen with this. Uh, perhaps uh, this whole stuff will uh, go into the trash can a second time, perhaps. But I think, um, yeah, I will, I don't will uh, lose something when I cut this up because i can't use it like this so yeah let's try that and um i have a plan in my head a little plan what i would like to do um i would like to uh, make some structure paste out of uh, white gesso and coffee from a coffee machine but not the liquid coffee but yeah this stuff that you uh, perhaps can't see here this stuff that uh, comes out of your coffee machine this waste of coffee and um, before I cut this up I have to say something because um, this idea with the coffee and also those um, paper flowers that I have here were inspired by my dear friend Susanne from Bollenhut Art I will link you that down below in the description box 
she made some of those um, really, really beautiful and incredible flowers. And I think I like those flowers. <laughs> so um, I gessoed them. She makes it with um, normal white glue so that you can see uh, the paper they are made out of. Uh, they are made from, uh, you know what I mean, uh, the paper structure and the patterns from the paper. You can see them a little bit better than on my piece here in her tutorial. But I will link that down below. You can check that out. And if you want to make um, some of them, you can uh, watch this tutorial and make your own. So I think that's a really, really great idea for mixed media pieces and for that stuff. And yeah, when you use them right, perhaps it can be a cool thing uh, yeah so as I said this coffee white gesso thing was inspired by Susanne um, hi Susanne <laughs> um, yeah uh, ich werde es jetzt mal versuchen hier zu retten ich habe keine Ahnung ob das funktionieren wird aber ich wollte jetzt nicht dieses Ding tatsächlich wegschmeißen und du hast gesagt ich soll nicht aufgeben also äh, ja <lacht> werde ich es jetzt mal versuchen, hier irgendwie zu retten. Schauen wir mal. Entweder wird dieses Video online gehen oder es wird genauso in den Mülleimer wandern wie dieses Papier. Schauen wir mal. Um, yeah, so um, I will cut this up and then I will be back. And in the meantime, you will see um, yeah, my process, how I came to this. And then I will be back uh, with the cutted pieces of this uh, stuff here. Okay, so I took some papers from my stash, some stencils, some washi tape that I haven't used later, but yeah, I wanted to have some uh, different kinds of things uh, that I can use for this page. And this is an old botanical book, um, I think approximately DNA4, so this is a double DNA4 page. And in the first step, I tried to collage with some uh, onion dyed papers where I have added some brushes the other day. Um, I collaged with some mocker pages from a dictionary and um, yeah, this is a piece from an, another botanical book. Um, and I tried to do it like they said in this professional videos, don't think about it, do it and yeah, don't overthink it. And I think here I made the first mistake um, that I haven't thought about how to um, glue this uh, scraps. And yeah, that was a really strange thing. And I think the first problem, the first mistake I made here. Um, as you can see, some corrugated cardstock came here to this page and um, I tried to mute the colors with this gesso. Um, and then I used this onion... Uh, packaging <clears throat> so this is some kind of yeah fabric plastic thing and I try to give this page the first structure with this uh, thing in uh, the meantime I think um, you could also leave this thing on the page I tried to remove it so that I only have this structure that works but I think it's a better effect when you leave this net from the onion on the page um, and then I used my flower stencil um, I yeah I removed uh, some of those um, uh, patterns from the net to uh, have a little bit more space for the flower stenciling so I think you can't see that here because of this white gesso on white ground but believe me <laughs> in this stadium is it was really really beautiful I think and then I took my coffee <clears throat> and some purple and pink brush or colors. And then the disaster began. I uh, mixed the brushes with coffee instead of water because I wanted to mute down the colors of the brushes. Uh, the brush colors are really, really bright and they have really intensive colors. Um, for some projects I like that, but for this one I actually wanted to mute them down a little bit. Um, I think I used way too much of those pigments. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yeah, the coffee was not brown enough to get this muted effect. Um, I uh, turned the page 
a little bit around to get them mixed up a little bit more. But um, yeah, even with the heat gun, it was not the effect that I planned. And yeah, the experts say, okay, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Do it, do it, do it. So I um, made the same thing on the second page, as you can see here. And I also added some green here now because I thought with this yellow on the left side that could be a great effect. And I also tried um, to mix those brush or colors a little bit more and used my heat gun to bring them together. So this effect was not such bad, but all those white spaces in between, yeah, I was not really happy with that. But I thought, okay, go on. Um, then I mixed some gesso with brown brush and some coffee to get the the edges and this frame of the page a little bit more muted, a little bit um, something like faded and yeah, not <clears throat> not such clear um, uh, visible um, the, of this watercolor things. Um, and yeah, the brushes mixed really crazy. Um, I think I have here this grayish and browny stuff that I wanted, but yeah, I was not satisfied. Then I came to the idea to make this white stenciling above, as you can see, and I thought, okay, I can use those um, paper flowers that Susanne made in her video where I got this inspiration from and put them on this white stenciling with the gesso. So here you see me um, cutting some pieces and I just teared up some yeah, nearly circles or something like that and then I um, stapled them also with um, some of those pieces from this onion net and fix them with those little clips so that I have four of those flowers. Then I've put them into a pot of water and then I added gesso to uh, be able to form those little leaves of the flower. Um, in her video, Susanne did that with white glue and not with gesso so that you can see the structure and the patterns of the paper you used for the flowers a little bit more but I thought I would like to have it like this because um, I can um, more easy fix them on onto the page so as you can see here I put some gesso under it and then um, press them onto this uh, yeah this gesso and blended the edges a little bit and then I thought, okay, where are my flowers? <laughs> that was really crazy. So I tried to give it a little bit more contrast by adding this coffee powder from my coffee machine and some water. And um, yeah, I tried to uh, yeah get this a little bit brownish and and yeah to mix with the the underground and the the things that are under it. And in this last step, I added some of those onion dyed and brusho colored um, scraps because I couldn't see my scraps that I did in the beginning anymore. And then I splattered with golden and white paint and that's the result. So here I'm back and you can't believe what what's going on in my mind at this moment because that was now a really, really incredible um process to cut this things up. Um, I have a little bit of a problem to explain that in English, but um, perhaps you know that when you have something um, about that you are not satisfied and you are struggling with it and then you cut it and or you do something else to, to change it or something like that. And then during this changing process, so in this case, during my cutting process, I thought, okay, what's going on here? And I was really, really surprised. And now I'm a little bit thrilled because look at this. Now I have something like a journaling card or something like that, or I can use it as a pocket or what else, um, where I have yeah something like a 
harmony or, or something like yeah things where I can say okay when I have this I can put a little embellishment here a little butterfly a flower or something like that here on this uh, thing and I can um, put it into a journal or I can leave it like it is and put it into a journal and even if I would turn it like this it would make something like a sense for me so yeah let me show you the other pieces so <clears throat> some things I have uh, from the sides of this page so, so for example this one here but I think that can make a really cool um, pocket or a tuck spot or, or even a belly band or something like that um, and yeah then I have this small piece here I've cut this because I want to have a little surface where I can try this thing with the gesso and the coffee because <laughs> when I try it on the uh, on the other pieces so for example this one here then perhaps um, yeah I can throw this away when it doesn't work I don't know if that will work so I have this one here to try that out um, and yeah so let me just show you the other things without the flowers so this one here looks really really incredible in my eyes and when I see this I see something like a face I can't tell you here are the eyes or in the mouth and something like that but yeah sometimes I feel it's um, not a face but some um, old things or some some um, of those birdies that are flying through the night or something like that and I also can see something like towers so that's a little bit clearer here yeah something like a city or something like that and this structure here seems for me uh, that it is a little bit nearer to me and this is in the background so because the colors um, are a little bit more muted and blended uh, so that it makes a little bit um, yeah of a three-dimensional look and when I can see such things even if I won't um, put a city on it even if I will not um, draw a face or something like that but I need such things for my imagination so um, otherwise I can't live with it I don't know if you can can yeah imagine that or if it's the same when you are looking to such things but um, I need that to be satisfied otherwise yeah it's a really strange feeling and perhaps you can leave me a comment if you can um, imagine what I'm talking about here because that's always uh, yeah some of a, some kind of a really a uh, difficult thing when I make my YouTube videos and I try to talk about those processes and these feelings then it's a little bit difficult because yeah I don't know if you are thinking about this as well or if it's interesting for you so please leave me a comment and tell me what you are thinking about this um, yeah what shall I say I love this piece perhaps you can imagine that this is in a journal page and here you can um, tuck something behind or you can make a belly band or whatever and now this makes sense to me and yeah it looks really really cool I think um, yeah so some other small pieces I think some leftovers or something like that not such interesting and <clears throat> now we will come to the flower things here so this one I've cut from the left uh, page as you perhaps can remember and now I have the feeling that the flow of this page goes in this direction and I have something like this here because of this lighter parts some line here and some line here and this flower is on the uh, point where those both lines this one and this one so my imagined lines uh, where they touch and the flower is exactly here and now this makes sense to me and that's really really incredible because as you saw I did nothing to it until now and I only have cut it and it is so uh, yeah so different and suddenly I'm in love with it and I don't know <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's, it's something like a mysterium or something like that, some uh, witchcraft or something like that. This one here is from the right side of the, as it, so from the other side, so the right side, the two uh, flowers, yeah, the third one was here, 
oh, uh, like this. And I think, yeah, when you take this here, you can make a really cool thing in a journal when you put this on one side of the journal and this one here on the other side because you can see that it belongs together here. But yeah, so this um, can be something like one as well. But when you make it like this, then you can see, okay, <clears throat> this is one, but it's, um, yeah, two parts that belong together and you can make a tuck spot here or a pocket or something like that or put some old letters into it and um, use the other thing for the other side. Um, yeah, so and the left, last thing, I forgot that in the beginning, is some similar thing like this here. So I think that would fit together really nice as well. So in the same um, method, I suggested this one here you could use this i think <sighs> okay so <clears throat> when i started this video of course i couldn't know how this will come out and i haven't expected that this comes out like this so um the original plan was to have some really muted colors. I wanted it not <clears throat> to be so colorful like it came out. But as you could see in the um, speed up video, I use brushes for this. And even if you mix that with coffee and with um, coffeeed gesso, then it comes out really bright and really, really colorful. Um, I think perhaps I used... Uh, way too much of those brush or pigments uh, that can be a reason um, but yeah you know when you have put them on your paper then they are there and you can't remove them and I think that's the reason why I'm not so satisfied because I had another thing in my mind that I have really really muted and some browny brownish colors um, and the brush or colors the intention was that they are only some highlights or something that's in the background but not such visible as you can see here i could manage it with this coffee stuff here to bring them uh, into the background and um, i think this is okay because it's not such greeny and and purplish but um, i would like to try that on the other pieces as well <clears throat> for that and I have uh, to say, I have to fix this with a fixative because the coffee comes um, off a little bit. But I have, um, yeah, you know, the spraying bottle where I can spray over these pieces and then everything will be fixed. So please don't panic when you want to make that by your own or something um, similar. And you see those coffee things here on my table. Uh, when I spray this fixative, this will stay forever where it is. So uh, don't panic. So I take uh, some baking uh, paper here and yeah, let's just try it on a little small piece like this. Um, and the plan is first mixing some of the white gesso with the coffee. And I, oops, and I saw this in another tutorial. Um, I don't know who that was because that was in the very beginning of my junk journaling time. And uh, I saw someone who showed, um, yeah, using coffee with gesso, using um, those little um, things that you have in the cage of your rabbits or something like that. I don't know how this is called. Um, so this dried grass or something like that. And she mixed it up with white gesso and made something like a structure paste out of it and this is this is the plan so i just um took this here out of my coffee machine so this is a little bit wet and uh yeah now the plan is to mix it with the gesso and i don't know how much i have to take but yeah let's try it Okay, so this reacts like I want it and like I saw it in the other video. So that's uh, the first positive thing to say about this whole stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's really yeah something like liquid. 
don't know if that will work because yeah when i take this out of my coffee machine this stuff here then of course it's a little bit wet because yeah the machine made a coffee before perhaps it is a better idea to dry that because um the next thing i want to do is to use a stencil and when i have a stencil and this is such wet i don't know i don't know if that will work Okay, so let me just grab some things uh, from my kitchen stash here. Let me think about what we can use. Uh, yeah, as you know, I'm not in my uh, craft room because my craft room is on the camping site where I normally work and craft. And uh, because of the lockdown, I'm not allowed to go there at the moment. And I'm thinking about pizza meal. <laughs> okay, so let me da just try to give some of this here. Um, I think you could also use cornstarch or something like that. If this will work, cornstarch will work as well. Okay, perhaps that was too much. But that's not the problem. I can add some gesso as well. Oh, looks interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, and because I'm not allowed to go to my uh, craft room because of that, I have to live with the things I have here. And sometimes that's a really big problem. Um, when I am in my crafty area in my caravan, I can use yeah some things where I normally make my structure paste from. For example, I have this uh, this um, how is this called? I have, I made a video for that a structure paste tutorial or something like that, and I knew the name. I um, will blend it in. I I can't remember the name of what I am talking about here. But when you are not in the normal area where you normally would do this, then you have to live with the things that are around you. And that's what I'm trying to do here. But <laughs> junk journaling is all about experimenting. And yeah, I had a really nice chat with Susanne from Bollenhut Art letzte Nacht, letzte Nacht, <laughs> last night, sorry. Um, and she also experimented with some things. And I think you will find her video of her process. It's So it's a completely different uh, tutorial, but you will find the new video of her on her channel, I think. So check out the info box and um, go to her channel. And check that out because she has really, really cool ideas. And now I think this has a really cool feeling. So uh, let's try. Yes, I can try. I think I can try it here. If this is liquid enough to go through this stencil. So let's try it. And I think it belongs a little bit to the stencil that you have, if that will work. Okay, that's, I think, a little bit too dry. As you can see here, uh, I couldn't yeah, scratch it over this thing here. I think I will add a little bit more of the white gesso to make it a little bit more liquid i was a little bit uh yeah i had a little bit too much of this white thing cornstarch thing and i think it can have a little bit yes it's <laughs> sorry it's a little bit uh a crazy color so i think 
when it's a little bit lighter it's still brown but not so extreme now that feels better <laughs> and sometimes I think such ideas are coming only in those lockdown times so uh, that's the first and hopefully last lockdown time I have in my life but I think uh, this video has something to do with the situation <laughs> uh, and sometimes I see crazy things on Facebook and crazy tutorials and I think okay something is going on here with this uh, corona thing and the circumstances that we have to stay at home and come to crazy ideas okay and that 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 is that what I wanted don't know if you can see that Yes, I think you can see that. Uh, that looks really cool. <clears throat> so I think I have to be a little bit fast now to do that before this begins to dry. Um, before I do that on my original piece, I will clean that up so that I have it fresh and new and then I will be back. Okay, so this piece here looks a little bit like uh, in this sandbox in the kindergarten, but... <laughs> yeah let's try to put this um flower stencil here to this piece <laughs> okay so don't think about it too much i think i will do it like this when i will do it like this i will get a little frame here around so yeah only there on the top but then i have to line it up like this and like this i don't want this frame so yeah, perhaps like this okay so let's take some of this slimy thing here ah <laughs> susanne hilfe ich habe angst ich habe immer ein bisschen angst wenn ich sowas mache Okay, so let's try to get that into this edge as well and not there so perhaps that can look interesting <sighs> okay don't know <sighs> don't know what you see but what i see is not what i want to see So I think the stenciling is really clear, but because of the background, I can't see the flowers as clear as I want to see them. Perhaps you agree. So when I um, turn it like this, as you can see, it's really visible. <laughs> but okay, so. Um, I will try another one and then I will dry them and try to let some coffee flowing through these lines here because um, as you know normally you would use your stenciling with your stru structure paste or something like that first and then you would add some color to bring the stenciling out a little bit more. And perhaps <clears throat> that's the trick because yes of course you have I have really much structure here and perhaps that's the point uh, yeah I will clean this up and we'll be back in a second okay so let's try this one and let's try to make it here into the middle perhaps Let's 
something like this so that we can get perhaps those three flowers here. That's not so bad. That's not so bad. <laughs> Yes, I think that's better. And as you can see, the contrast here between the white and the purple uh, is much bigger than on this other piece here. So for example, here, the contrast is not such big. And I think the more gesso you have, the better uh, it is. So uh, this there in the left corner, I mixed with a little bit gesso, as you could see. And this is the original thing. And I think the more gesso you have, the better um, this comes out because it's a little bit lighter and not so, uh, yeah, one with the background. Uh, yeah, another stencil cleaning, cle cleaning, <laughs> cleanering, cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come to this piece uh, before I will um, dry the others with my hair dryer. I just want to try another stencil just to show you um, what happens when we have a little bit uh, yeah, some kind of a bigger pattern. Not this floral thing, but yeah, something like this here. Um, I don't know what will happen but I think I will try it like this just to see um, how it will look when the little slots here of this thing are not so tiny and filigree like this other thing with the flowers Yeah, not such bad as I think. I think that's not bad. So um, this stru structure paste or yeah, how you will call it, it's really rough and really hard to to bring to the right places. And I think when you have a um, stencil like this that has a little bit of a yeah, not such filigree pattern, then it's much easier to get the imagination of some structure and the imagination of the original uh, stencil. Um, I also like those little bit kind of abstract things um, and I don't need um, the, yeah, how is this called? Oh, this English English language is such difficult for me uh, so if you see this here that's an imagination of this but it's not such clear um, as it perhaps is planned by the people who made this when you would use uh, distressing ink or, or stamping ink or something like that from a stamp pad and you would bring it up to this with a distressing tool or something like that, of course, uh, you will get a really clear um, result of this. This is not such clear. And it's also not such clear as it would be when you would use um, structure paste. But look at this. I think that's really, really interesting. And you can see the structure. And yet you can see those lines, but it's not such clear than it uh, would be with an ink or something like that. The same here. And I think this looks really, really great. So hopefully when I now take my heat gun and heat this, it will stay where it is. So I'm just thinking about letting it dry like it is and come back later. But I think I will try one piece 
just to tell you um, if that works. So if you are a little bit uh, in a hurry or if you don't have the patience to wait, um, I would like to give you the information if it will work with the heat gun. So yeah, I will. I think I will dry one with the heat gun and let the rest dry uh, with the air. And then I will be back. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, I think um, it's not necessary to say when you want uh, to make this here, you will have a really big mess on your table. Uh, but yeah, okay. So see you later. Hmm. Okay. So uh, what I learned is it's nearly no difference between uh, air drying and drying with a heat gun. So as you can see, it's really, really sturdy. It's dry. It's, yeah, something like a really, really nice structure. But I can't say that it's a difference between air drying and uh, heat gunning it. Um, as you can see, uh, it's a little bit wavy. It, it's, yeah, it turned like this. But this feels so sturdy that I think I can put it under some uh, heavy books and leave that overnight and then it will be flat. So I think that will work. Or what I also could do is uh, back it with some cardstock or something like that so that it gets a little bit, um, yeah, the, the paper itself is really thin so it would uh, get, uh, yeah, something like more sturdiness or yeah, how would you call that? Um, I will not do that now because, uh, yeah, it's not the content of this uh, video and I don't know what uh, I will use this for until now because when I have a journal and I want to make a belly band or a pocket or something like that, then I can back it with some heavier um, paper or cardstock and when I perhaps want to make a um, bookmark or something like that or something like a banner so for example sewing here and putting it uh, to a journal page like this then I don't need that so I will decide that later but what I want to try out with this and I'm really nervous is um, to give some coffee through those little uh, things here so I don't want to do that with every piece but <clears throat> for example this one here with my eyes, I can see the structure, but I can see that you can't see that really clear in my camera. That's the first point. And um, you have to go really near with your eyes to see that. And I want to try to make this background a little bit darker by giving some coffee here through these little slots. Perhaps this um, structure paste here will come out a little bit more. So the pattern will come out a little bit more, hopefully. Um, as you can see, the things with the flowers I left like they were uh, because <clears throat> I thought it would be a little bit too confusing for the eyes to have this this uh, structure because the flowers, as you can see, they are dimensional and perhaps when I uh, put the structure paste here, then it's um, yeah simply too much. I will decide later if I want to stamp with some stays on ink and this stencil, but I don't know until now. Um, so let's first try this thing with the structure here. So, yeah. Uh, let me just pick a, something like this to protect this surface and to catch the the color that hopefully will come down here so as you can see here's my coffee and i want to try to let this um, flow here from the side of the piece through these lines I think I saw in some videos that they 
do it like this but that lifts up not only the color on the on the structure but also in between so yeah let me just try that a little bit with a little bit more sorry if you don't see anything but i have to uh, yeah, put it like this so that it can come in there I think it's better than before so let me just bring the camera a little bit more down so that you can see that a little bit better like this Hey, perhaps it would be better to have some really professional colors or something like that so um, yeah when you look at those mixed media pieces and watch really mixed media uh, professional mixed media videos then they often use those sprays or something like that from yeah, several brands I really don't know the names but um, I think that would be perhaps a little bit better idea because this is really liquid and it's hard to get it there where you want it so I will try to give here into the slots a little bit more so perhaps that will dry there a little bit more intensive and as you can see here in the middle of the flower there's this white space and there as well and when I put this stuff here into it then you can see it goes uh, into the slots so it, it flows to the sides and it's a little bit more here and here and I want to have that there because then I hope that it dries really dark so that we get this really cool effect so through my camera it looks really cool i think so hopefully 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 <laughs> this will dry in a really extreme dark way in this areas here okay so let's use this up And hopefully now this darker parts will stay there and the lighter parts on top of this pattern uh, will stay there as well. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But you know me, I'm always experimenting with such things. And I also try to show things in my videos uh, that you can do at home. So um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that my friend Susanne will, um, so that's the person, the really, she's a really sweet person. Um, her channel is called Bollenhut Art. So um, you can check that out by clicking to the info box and finding the link there. I'm pretty sure that she is just cutting and uploading a video where she um, makes also something with stenciling coffee and structure paste um, and she made her own stencil by punching with a hole punch through a normal cardboard um, and hopefully um yeah this video will be online very soon because i'm really um excited about this process that she will show in her video and of course you can do that at home as well you can make your own stencils by punching or yeah something like that you don't um, have to use or you don't have to uh, buy such a stencil with a flower pattern or something like that of course you can do that with circles and any other things that you can imagine that you can punch out from from some cardboard or something like that <laughs> and while I'm watching this here, uh, yeah, here it's really dark. 
and here yeah but let's see i will dry that and i will just prepare another coffee um, because you can see this is empty and then i will be back <laughs> okay so let's try it with this one here as well <clears throat> here was yeah originally the plan was to have one two three flowers don't know if you can see them they are really 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 light and yeah not so visible because of this background um the plan now i have in my mind is to bring something like a line through here with this brownie thing here so i will make it like this a little bit and hold it in my hand so can you see that so that it's a little bit wavy here so that the coffee can perhaps flow a little bit more controlled I think that's not not so bad uh, because I don't want this darker things flow to the sides because here it's really cool shading but um, with this whole coffee brush and that things it's really 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 strange sometimes what happens there because here as you can see it's already really light and I don't know what will happen here in the middle. Sometimes I'm asking myself, where is this color going? So when you use that and you have, yeah, some results where you think, okay, when this is dry, then it's really nice. <laughs> yeah. And then when it's dry, uh, especially with the brush holes, they are going somewhere and they don't come back. And that's really strange. So I'm just making it like this to bring something here and here because that was really light before and hopefully when this is dry yeah it gets a cool effect and this shading as well and perhaps i can show you in the meantime what happened with our other piece and here you can see what i was talking about before so as you can see this is really shiny so that means it is already um wet already no that's not the right word so it's still wet <laughs> sorry um, but the darker and lighter parts that we had before they have gone completely and the brush of things um, in this little slots here they removed um, in the same way like on the other piece before so that this went lighter and the structure paste went darker so exactly the other way around as i planned it but i think yeah i think that looks really nice uh, so don't know what happens um until this is really dry but yeah i just wanted to show you this in between so that you don't panic when you <clears throat> do that at home and you think okay <laughs> what's going on here um because sometimes um yeah the things are dry in a way and change their colors and their shadings and that stuff that we can't plan obviously so yeah that's the thing that i have to learn because yeah sometimes i have something in my mind and in the reality it's totally different as you could see with this whole uh, stuff here with this whole page and of course when you have mere practice and when you have always the same supplies and that stuff then you can control it a little bit better and when you use for example those um, sprays that are made for yeah this kind of art then uh, you can control that better because they would react 
in the same way on your surface when you have the same surface every time and yeah that stuff then of course it will be a little bit different and more controllable but sometimes those experiments are also great let me just focus that so i think that looks really amazing and this brown and the brushes i think that's a really cool combination so Okay, so here we go, because I want it here on the sides, on the on the edges, a little bit darker. I think that gives it, um, yeah, a little bit more of a dimension. That's that. <clears throat> Oops, so here, as you can see, the brown has gone. So before I could take a photo. So this is the piece I made a few seconds ago. And as you can see, it's like this now. It looks really beautiful as well. But the difference between this wet thing, as you can see here, and this is really, really extreme. Strange, strange, strange. Okay, so let me just bring this out of the way and then I will be back. <sighs> okay. So I think you don't want to know what's out there out of the camera frame because that looks so strange. I can't tell you, but yeah, let's wait until it's dry. So for this piece here, I decided to go a little safer way. I like this really much and I want to have something like a focal point here for that. <clears throat> and I go the safer way because I don't want to destroy it. So if all those things there are destroyed. Perhaps I have one piece here <laughs> that I like and that I can live with. So I want to have this flower here as a focal point on this little scrap here. By the way, this is um, onion dyed paper with brushes. I made this a time ago that worked really well. Normally I would do this now with such a beauty blender tool, but I don't want this clear frame of this stuff. And I don't have the right ink here at the moment uh, in my yeah little lockdown craft station kitchen. I only have this stays on permanent ink. And I try to get this there with this uh, yeah toothbrush makeup thing. Um, because hopefully that will uh, blend out a little bit. Um, I don't expect that but with the beauty blender I think it will not work so let's just try it I go from the middle and then trying to bring this really lightly to the to the edges and blend it out a little bit yeah I think I can lift it up oh yes <laughs> Okay, so let me just close this and show you this in detail. So I think this is really beautiful. Hopefully you like it as much as I do. I'm just thinking about distressing the edges. Perhaps that can give it a little bit of a frame. Of course, I will do that with this beauty blender, of course, uh, now. Because that's easier than with this... Uh, other sponge and now I think it has really beautiful optic um, even if you wouldn't do anything to it but I know those people who love those layering and stuff and little glittery things or something like that and of course you can um, put that to those cards as well or you can also add a little quote or something like that i can't do that now because i don't know how i will use this in a future journal but here for example would be a really cool um place for a quote or some words or something like that
And when you put this together, I think that looks really, really nice. Okay. For the flowers. So, uh, yeah, originally it was planned to talk about those really strange flowers here. Um, I would like to um, try to, yeah, stencil with these uh, things here as well. Uh, I found a stencil that I got in a Happy Mail. And I just thought perhaps we can make something like a flower stamp with this because now this flower is hanging in the air some uh, for some reason but i think i like this that's cool oh <laughs> sorry maha look at this i like it i really really like it Yes, yes, yes. So where's the next flower? Now, I think I will distress the edges here of this piece and of all the other pieces, I think, as well, because I want this similar uh, optic of them. And then uh, I will send you some photos in the end of the video and also post them on my Instagram feed so that you can check that out there. So this end results when every, everything is dry and so on. Uh, and I think I have some pieces of fabric leftovers that I could staple here on top. So for example, then could this be a tag or something like that? I would try that out even if I said that I don't know uh, what to do with it, but I think it could ro look really nice when there's some fitting pieces of uh, fabric here on top or on the side or somewhere else. So you will see the finished re the results on my Instagram and on the end of this video. Um, thank you so much for being here with me in this really, really stressful process. But I think in the end, I got my creative motion back. So, and that's a point um, why I made this video and why I'm uploading this to my YouTube channel. So perhaps it's a little bit help for those people who have the same problems like me, especially in this really weird times uh, with this lockdown and that stuff. Um, because I think sometimes it can happen that, yeah, we got into, that we come into a motion that we don't want to have. And it's really, really hard to come out of this. And especially in those crazy times that we have at the moment. <clears throat> so again, thank you very, very much for watching. So um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click this little notification bell. Then you will get informed when I upload a new video. Um, and yeah, perhaps you would like to follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Facebook. Perhaps you would like to visit my homepage. If you are a German-speaking um, uh, viewer, then you can um, go to my website. There are some German contents as well. Um, all the informations are linked down below in the description box as usual. And yeah, I wish you a really crafty, happy, healthy time. See you the next time. Bye-bye.